Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a supportive worm community, you are in the right place. Today, I wanna to talk about how do you know when to feed your worms? While I work on Blue, my largest worm bin at 55 gallons, I will talk about his unique problems and also let you know when you know to feed your worms. So first things first, let's get Blue moving back into a harvestable ability. You see there's a lot of crumbs on top here. And that is because I flipped over uh, some of my older bins on the blue to dry out, which they have. So I'm going to just scoop this down to the end and we will let that continue curing and drying out. And possibly I will get a harvest out of that again in a couple of weeks. So tip number one, you need to reflect on your worm bins and score them for size, population and maturity. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. So for bin size, bins under 15 gallons. And you know, so that's this big. That would be what I consider to be a small bin. And then you have the medium bins that are either, you know, much wider or much deeper. And I would say up to 40 gallons. And then you have the large bins, which are over 40 gallons, which is blue here. Small bins are very much less forgiving. If you uh, screw up and feed your little bin too much, you are gonna be in trouble. Basically, it is going to quickly kill your worms from a buildup of methane, carbon dioxide, you know, could be fermenting. So with small bins, you really do have to be more careful. Then we move on to the next thing you need to be evaluating which is population density so i would say that most people start out their starter bins with one gallon or one pound per 10 gallon and i'll put the metric equivalents up there and that's usually where people start they purchase a pound of worms and then they get a, a bin about yay big, and that's usually how people start their worm farms. And that is pretty, that's a pretty normal density for worms, so that they have enough room to grow as well as, um, you know, repopulate the bin in higher numbers. High density populations would be over one pound per 10 gallon. And that also is what I have here with blue. I probably have 15 to 20 pounds of worms in this 55 gallon bin. So he has got a very large population and every time I flip a bin inside of him, it gets bigger. Okay, so the next thing you need to consider about, you know, thinking about when you are going to decide upon a frequency to feed your bins is also the bin maturity. Now, for those of you who have been into worm farming for many years, you know that your bins pretty much go along like clockwork, but that is not so for new people. So I would say within the first six months, we're gonna call that a baby bin or a new bin. Anything under six months old just doesn't have the ecosystem of the microbes, the fungi, and the little helpers in the bin like the roly polies, the mites, and the springtails. I'm not saying, you know, I like them when they get out of control, but they are necessary if you want a quickly functioning worm bin. So if your worm bin is under six months old, you need to reduce your expectations as to what you think that bin is going to eat. And if your bin is anywhere between, you know, over six months to 18 months, you know, it is starting to get there, but it's probably not completely stable yet. Uh, you know, quick change in temperature or moisture could probably still throw the whole thing off. Then you're gonna look at bins that are mature, which is anything over about a year and a half old. You would pretty much think that by that time, any of the microbes, fungi, and uh, macro and micro critters that are gonna be in your bin are probably in your bin and then also are at an equilibrium that is probably, you know, as efficient as it is going to be. Comment down below, how old are your bins? And what would you consider them? Large, medium, or small? And would you consider them to be mature or baby bins? 
The next thing you need to consider is one of the things that I struggle with the most, which is what is the environment that your worm bin is in? What is the temperature? What is the, the moisture that the bin is in? That actually, believe it or not, has a big impact on what your worms and worm community are going to be able to consume. Here in my basement, I deal with the fluctuation between dry and cold in the winter and then hot and humid in the summer. So when we're looking at my bins in the winter time, you know, they're not very ideal. I have to work very hard to keep them in an ideal condition. So blue here has a mix of red wigglers, European night crawlers, and blue worms. So red wigglers and European night crawlers, they actually are pretty solid worms and they do really well from about 35 to 80 Fahrenheit. Blue worms and African night crawlers are a little more fussy at 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it is kind of unusual that I have them mixed in this bin here. But all worms, without regard to um, their breed as far as compost worms go, they like their um, humidity or their humidity, their moisture at about 50 to 80 percent. Now I run a little bit on the low side. I'm probably at about 60 percent here and as I go towards the harvest side of this bin it is even lower. But when you want worms to be truly happy you're looking at them being happy at 50 to 80 percent moisture. Now 80 percent would not fall apart when I poke it like this. 80% would be like a mud ball. They would still be happy, but anything over that, then you're going to have some problems. If the temperature and moisture is off, the worms, you know, if they're too dry, they could actually dry out and get smaller. At low moisture, they're not gonna be able to breathe correctly and they will not be able to eat as much. The temperature is most of the time out of the control of the humans, so you just kind of have to deal with that. But before you feed, make sure that your moisture in the area that you are going to feed in it has been corrected before you feed them anything. Okay, let's move you down to the other end of the bin. Okay, now the next tip is going to be what type of food do you have to feed your bin? And you wouldn't think that that would be an indicator of, you know, when you feed your bin, but what kind of food that you give your worms actually makes a big difference in how frequently you're going to need to feed them. So in my case, I have a lot of kitchen scraps and a lot of cardboard and paper. Now for this mix of worms, most of, ooh, ooh, worm ball, hold on. Pause that thought. We're getting into a worm ball a lot sooner than I thought we were. Let's, let's shift on over here and see what is going on. Let's see if I can get under this. I see a little bit of avocado. Did not think we were in the feeding zone yet. All right, let's see what we've got. And then we can talk about the food that I fed and why the worms are still this far to the business end of the bin. What is going on here? What are you guys eating? Okay, I thought I saw some avocado, but now I'm not really seeing it. But avocado is one of those slower foods that can keep worms in an area for an extended period of time. Um, so getting back on track with what I was trying to say here is that what kind of food that you have for your worms can also cause you to possibly feed more or less frequently. Now this is a melon. Now I know why they're there. I see those tiny little seeds, which means I'm going to have a lovely crop of um, <laughs> sprouts sometime soon. Looks like they've eaten almost everything except for those seeds. So. That's pretty good. They're going to start moving closer to this end. So the type of food that you have available for your worms. So if all you have is slow food, then your worms probably are going to either need to have a buffer of something that is faster food, or you might have to um, supplement them. But if you have a lot of fast food, you know, you could be causing your worms to breed faster and then also keep getting distracted by the avocado. So fast foods, your worms eat them and then run away. Slow foods, it takes a while. You have to have the bin critters getting into them, such as the mites. And I know a lot of people don't like to see mites in their bins, but they are very useful. 
So that's one of the things that I wanted to say is that slow versus fast food. Let me try that again. Slow versus fast food. You know, if you go into the bin and there's no food left, then it was probably fast food and the worms probably want food more frequently. And then another thing that, you know, is another tip is, you know, how much time do you have to mess with your worms? Like right now is the summertime. I do not have as much time to take care of my worms as I do say in the winter time. So if you're busy, if you have, you know, a busy job or you're going on vacation um, or like me, you have a lot of garden to take care of, you can't come down and look at your worms every single day or maybe even sometimes every week. So what you're going to wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to try and buffer that by giving them a variety of foods. And also if you don't have more food, you can always add more bedding. It is food, but it is kind of like a neutral food. So I try to give about a two to one ratio on the bedding. And uh, that way the worms, even if they run out of kitchen scraps, they'll always still have the bedding to eat on here. Now I did a big harvest outside of videos uh, last month. And so we're actually getting into a very big feeding zone here. So that's, I'm, that's why I'm remembering like, why are these worms all over the place? They're all over the place because I fed all over the place. So, you know, I think the, you know, bringing home the whole concept here is listen to your worms. And if your worms still have a lot of food left, then you don't want to feed them. If you are smelling the bin and it smells like there's something funky, then if you have room in your bin, then maybe add some bedding. But don't add kitchen scraps if things are starting to smell funky because you don't want that buildup of CO2 or methane um, to hurt your worms. So we're still digging here. I fed a big thing of rhubarb too a month or two ago. So yeah, all my worms are down here at this end, with the exception of the new ones I brought in from the new bin. The moisture, as I talked about early, is very mud ballish. So this is probably pushing over 70 in this new area of the bin, and it's staying nice and moist like that because the humidity in the basement is very high because of all the rain. So I'm not seeing a lot of food. I'm seeing a potato here and there. Potatoes tend to be very slow foods. And still seeing the bedding. Everything still smells good. Smells like a forest floor kind of a thing. So when you're, you know, tallying up your score for your bin, is it a big bin or a small bin? Is it highly populated or underpopulated? Is it a mature bin or a new bin? This is one of those things. So I probably fed five gallons of food last time and 10 gallons of bedding, which is, is about right for this bin. It was a combination of fast food and slow food with the, you know, the corn and the avocado pits and the potatoes. And then, you know, the faster food with the, the squash and the onions. So these guys, they're ready for a, a meal. I don't have a huge, huge feeding for them today, but that is okay because they are still, they still have some of the old feeding. So that's what I mean by listening to the worms. They still have some food. They still have some of that rhubarb. They definitely have some avocado pits. I think we saw that potato earlier, mango seed. And oh, look, finally found some food food. So at the very back, I found some cabbage, and I actually put this in last week just because I was uh, making some pickled cabbage and I had some stems and whatnot left over. So that was not part of the feeding last time. That was a quick, I need some place to put some stinky food, and Blue was the recipient. All right, so we've got all of the big undigested chunks down there, moving everything over. 
And then this is where we're going to give them a stock pot of food for today. So putting all these big chunks down here so that the new food can get in there and saturate all of the long-term food and make it more tasty for the worm and the worm critters, uh, worm bin critters. And then we're gonna get them some bedding. So this is about two gallons of food. It is a combination of tomatillo, tomato, onion, um, cabbage, whatever was in the kitchen. And we're gonna put that over the top right there. So hopefully that will make all of those roots and stems tasty. Probably still gonna be a combination of slow and fast. The tomato will go pretty darn fast but those uh, cabbage stems are probably going to be slow. Then let me get them some bedding. Then I have a five gallon bucket of my prepared bedding, which has been prepared with shredded cardboard and paper, as well as with coconut coir. And I really only use that to keep this nice and friable. If it was just paper, it would all stick together like glue. And then there is some seaweed extract that is in with the bedding that helps the microbes get going faster eating the paper because my goal is to get more castings faster. All right, guys, if you found this video helpful, please give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.